we begin with the impact of a Trump-appointed federal judge striking down the CDC mask mandate for public transportation. Airports and airlines immediately began lifting their mask mandate requirements after the ruling, and some even announced it mid-flight. Finally! Uh, effective immediately, immediately, masks are optional for all airport employees, crew members, and customers inside U.S. airports and on board aircraft. But not everyone is happy about the mandate getting lifted at this time. Includes me. I am in the list of people not happy because my mother is severely immune compromised and I've been riding Amtrak to go and see her. So now, though it doesn't seem like it would be a very smart and good idea to travel in close proximity with unmasked people who could have asymptomatic COVID right before going to see my immune compromised mother. And I'm not special. I can't be the only one in the situation. And a doctor traveling to the Dallas-Fort Worth airport said this about ending the mask mandate. I think it's a little premature. Um, working in the health field, I think we're seeing a lot of spikes in the variants. We're seeing spikes in our ERs, and in Chicago, we're a major city, so we see a lot of this going up and down. We don't have enough staff and, support and uh, employees to cover all these, so we are truly concerned. So we hope that everybody takes caution, especially for the kids and the, and the elderly and the sick. Joining us is Dr. Amber Moyne, a professor of epidemiology at the UCLA School of Medicine. And Dr. Moyne, I'd like to start with your reaction to this judge's ruling and the immediate lifting of mask mandates at many airports, on airlines, on Amtrak trains and other mass transit systems. What's the risk here? Well, I, I agree with the doctor that you just, uh, that you just featured uh, a few minutes ago. Uh, you know, it's it's premature, and and it isn't giving people enough time to prepare for this. There are many people, like your mom, who are immune compromised, who may be traveling right now, or are traveling with children, or just don't want to get COVID. And so, I think the 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 swiftness with which this has been lifted is particularly problematic. I mean, there are a lot of problems with this, but this is particularly problematic uh, because it's it's catching people off guard and not giving them alternatives to, to rearrange their travel uh, to fly in the conditions that they had expected to fly in. I want to talk about whether or not you think these premature decisions to lift these kinds of mandates, mask mandates, vaccine mandates, and whether or not you think it's due to misinformation. Because Delta, for example, today put out a statement that called COVID a, quote, ordinary seasonal virus. Is that true? What is the scientific analysis of how to describe COVID? And it, would you say it's an ordinary seasonal virus? I would definitely not say that it's an ordinary seasonal virus. I think that this is this is more misinformation and opinion that may be be used as 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 fact uh, coming from an airline. You know, I, I'd be very surprised that that statement came from from any kind of uh, um, a, a scientific analysis. You know, we've had this discussion before where this pandemic is not over. Uh, we still don't know what this virus is going to do over time. Uh, we are seeing increasing cases right now. You know, we, we, we don't have any indication of seasonality at this point. Uh, and and we are very, very likely in the midst of a large surge that is going to continue over the next uh, several weeks. You know, I, I just think that we're, we're in, a, in a very complex situation right now. Um, public opinion is definitely at odds with scientific opinion here. And what's happened has, has really um, put the CDC in jeopardy. How are they going to be able to make recommendations if there were, if you know, these can be struck down by by um, by a, a judge who has no public health experience or really uh, thinking about the public health ramifications of this? You know, and it also, by the way, this is putting a lot of people at risk, not just the passengers but the crew. Remember, EasyJet and mm -hmm. Brit um, and British Airlines actually had to cancel hundreds and hundreds of flights uh, a few weeks after those mask mandates were were taken off because all of a sudden all of the crew and staff were were uh, were getting covid and they couldn't stop those flights so important to remember that every action is going to have a reaction here nobody's going to get their cake and eat it too so you release you you remove these mask mandates not only are you putting people at risk but you're also going to be putting uh, the operations at risk as well 
It's a really important point about the staff, and I think about the staff first when I think about the safety on a flight or a train. It's not about me. It's not about where I'm trying to go. I'm the customer. The people who are required to be there because it's their employment, they should be safe. That should be their priority, but I'm not in charge of public policy. Um, Doctor, are you concerned at all about the lifting of mask mandates in the context of immune compromised people? I mentioned my mom. So I'm not immune compromised that I'm aware, knock on wood, but my family member is. I am not the only one in that situation. There are plenty of people with immune compromised family members or children or children who are too young to get the vaccine. How much at risk, increased risk, are we putting them in this particular moment by too quickly removing these mandates on public transit? I think we're definitely putting people at risk here. The, the key is, you know, um, airlines, for example, airplanes, for example, may be uh, in general safer if you're sitting in your seat. Uh, but the, it, it depends upon who you're sitting next to. If you're sitting next to somebody or in front of or directly behind somebody who has uh, COVID, potentially asymptomatically, doesn't know it, uh, and is spreading the virus, is you know transmitting virus. You, know, you are going to be at risk. There's no zero risk scenario here. And again, you know these these crew members who are going to be walking up and down the aisles where the air doesn't, you know, the air is um, they're exposed to a lot more people. You know, it's going to be very complex. The immune compromised um, individuals and those people who've not yet had the opportunity to get vaccinated, like children, are going to be in particular at risk. So the question is, is what can you do? And the answer is. You should really be thinking about what you're if you if travel is worth it for you at this particular moment. And if you are going to travel, wear the highest quality mask you can. Wear a KN95 or an N95. You know, I, I think uh, you know being really aware of your surroundings is going to be critical. And take a test a few days after traveling. Uh, that's going to be very important, whether or not you have symptoms. That is the optimal way to be able to handle this situation, this curveball that's just been thrown at everyone. It's so unfortunate that these curveballs are being thrown at all of us in a moment where we just want to rely upon science uh, and do the best thing uh, for everyone in terms of public health, not just the loudest individuals who don't like masks. Dr. Ann Moyne, thank you so much for helping us understand this really important breaking news. Please stay safe. Hi, I'm Zerlina Maxwell. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more from Zerlina by clicking any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thanks for watching.